be trying to make the one in the side. Most guys are. Oh, nice kiss. Now, you'll see the cue ball get below the rack a lot. Just because when you're playing a firm cut break and say you just hit it a shade thin, they're trying to zigzag the cue ball back to the center of the table. But if you catch it a hair thin, you're going to end up below the rack. And then it's a little bit of, uh, you know, the pool guys to see how what kind of shot you come away with. But a nice one here for Victor to get things started. He's had a, a really good year, Zelinski. Won the Lasko Open on the Euro Tour and also the Las Vegas Open. He's another of those players, Jeremy, particularly if he were to, to prosper here. You wouldn't be surprised at all to see him on the, the Moscow Only Cup team opposing you. Yeah, it's going to be, it's inevitable that you're going to see a player from Poland and I think it's inevitable you're going to see maybe two players from Poland make the same team here sometime soon. Of course, we talk about it. That European team is tough to make, tough to make the American team, but we can all be pretty frank about things. A little tougher probably on the European end at the moment, anyways. I'll remind you all that America is coming. And really playing at a pretty high pace. I mean, he's not a slow player by any means, but maybe trying to get used to what's coming with the shot clock later in the week, Phil. Well, it's not a, a bad way to go about things. I saw online, actually, he's known as Wiz, and he was certainly whizzing through that rack. You're right, though, about Polish pool. It has got such strength and depth. I remember when the... The lead player, as it were, the pioneer, was Radoslav Babica, who's playing here today. I think he's just on the verge of victory, actually. He was the, the guy who got things rolling, and then so many wonderful players came through after him. Yeah, Babica, nice, super nice guy. And, and the funny thing is, you know, you look at Babica, and he's a super solid player, of course, a great player. And, seems like the next generation of Polish players are just a little more fluid, a little more athletic. And, uh, you know, they're eight or ten deep here in Fulda, maybe more. We're looking for more of the same after that perfect start. Well, there you go as far as losing that cue ball. It's gonna, it's gonna get below the rack, and now that's the ultimate sin in nine ball pool, scratching on the break, ball in hand. And that's what I was talking about in match number one. If you catch the one a little thin, of course you have cue ball problems, but you're also gonna have some congestion around the rack a lot of times. So Wichter duo as the referee there to move the rack. While this cue ball is being placed, let me just dot the I's and cross the T's. I can tell you, Radislav Babica is through his first match. He beat Karl Nadenberg from Estonia. 9-6. A bit of nerves there from Massey missing a pretty easy safety. Just kind of Tucked the cue ball a little much with the back, the draw spin and has given up a look at the two kind of from nowhere. Really should have had the snooker there. Awkward cueing. I don't know if the two really has a pocket. Probably tries to run the cue ball safe here off the right side of the two, most likely. Well, it looks like he may be shooting at this. player on table two that just about to open that match and what a what a last uh, probably you know year and a half for Al Yusuf right he's played so well a lot of big finishes yes yeah, so the table two match which is literally just broken off Abdullah Al Yusuf against Ashik Nathwani 
And if you recall the UK Open on day one, Nathwani was 6 0 up on Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. In the end, he was just pipped. And that was the catalyst for FSR to go on and almost claim the silverware. Yeah, that was the big comeback that I was thinking of when we were on air earlier, Phil. And from there, I don't know too many matches besides the final that FSR really trailed after getting through that second match on the one loss side, I believe it was. See the jump cue here, maybe? About 50-50 to make this, I think. Cue ball should come across. Watch out the bottom of the nine. With the cue ball, could get a little bit of a kiss, and we'll see where it goes. difficult of a shot not a hanger that's for sure but position is what's difficult here really have to take some chance with the cue ball going to the right side of the nine towards the five and the four with the three a little bit on the left side of the table key here is when you're not sure about the cue ball man sometimes you take your eye off the ball you're you're trying to pocket so first things first oh he played the safety wow so just wasn't in love with the position on the three, I think. Nice two rail kick, holding the cue ball, trying to Get some distance between the cue ball and the two. On table two, very swift conclusion to the first rack. Ashik Nathwani knocked in a 6 9 combination to take the first rack from Abdullah Al Yusuf. That's the arena here. It is so busy out there, so many spectators milling around watching the outside tables, and the action is relentless. 24 tables here at the conference center of the Hotel Esperanto in Fulda, Germany. Yeah, that was always a difficult shot and I was pretty impressed with the two ball rolling it in, taking some distance on the three, but not the start so far for Massey and he's given up a pretty routine layout for a guy like Victor. Should extend the lead here. The one thing about Zelinski, as you would expect, given his career path and his success, particularly in 2022, he is absolutely oozing confidence. Well, I think that's most of the Polish players, to be honest with you. And what I felt is not only in the arena, outside the arena, the players are hanging out outside, the weather's beautiful, but a very big buzz in the seems like to me about this event of course matchroom does so many things with so many great events but bringing events to different parts of the world that's huge even if it is right here in europe 
just bringing an, another great event right here in Germany. You gotta believe this event's gonna grow and grow. And of course, for the Polish players, Poland is the neighboring country, just to the east. Yeah, Poland just to the east. The first two racks for Damian Massey, I'm afraid, have gone west. Victor Zielinski, 2-0 up. A big name through, I can tell you about, is Maximilian Lechner. He's beaten Eric Kohler from right here in Germany, 9-2. At the end of this tournament, of course, the top player from the USA and also from Europe will be automatically picked for the Moscone Cup. That's the top player, of course, in the Matchroom World Nine Ball rankings. Now, Shane Van Boning is guaranteed to be the player selected for Team USA off those rankings. We have two players who could be in that position for Europe. That is Joshua Filler and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. So I think it's going to be another really intriguing battle for those two. And yet another subplot, Jeremy. Absolutely. Uh, there's going to be going forward. I mean, we talk about the Moscone all year, but... Once we start to get to this time of the year, U.S. Open ahead. Um, I'm not sure if there's any Euro ranking events left, but but you're going to see both teams starting to take shape. Now he went to a much heavier hit on the one after losing the cue ball in the second rack. Consequently missed the one in the side. So now Massey with a very reasonable shot on the one and a chance to, to clear a table and get started. That's what I was going to comment about with the break is if you watch the opening break from Al Yusuf, he played a much heavier cut on the one, still making the one in the side, where Victor was more of a, a thinner cut shot on the one with the break. So you'll see some variety, that's for sure. And I think you'll actually see some players at times just go ahead and break head on uh, like the normal break. We've all, you know, tried to master through the years. Uh-oh. Sorry, I was kind of keeping my eye on table two as well with while wow, Massey's about to get started here on table one. Interesting little position shot there. Trying to keep it as simple as possible. Probably just over screwed the cue ball maybe six or eight inches. A little thin on the two. Looks like he wants to run the cue ball quite a bit. Yusuf looks like he's actually lost a few pounds as well. He looks like he's in much better shape. Funny little shot here on the three. Just a decision. Do I just go up the left side of the table or do I come two cushions to the center? I'd probably just stay on the left side myself, but he's going to run the cue ball could get on top of the pink four here it's going to work out
as we saw with Sonareb Azar from Sweden in our first televised match today. When you're the outsider, it's important to make an early impact, not just to win the odd rack here or there, but to win them impressively, convincingly. And that's what Massey needs to do here because Zelinski is a wonderful front runner who could swamp him if he's not too careful. And as far as going forward in these matches, those first racks are so huge just to get some confidence, a little feel, a little feel the nerves. Opened up the arm a little bit there. Nice shot that, played that with a, a touch of side to widen the angle off the top cushion. To leave this almost unmissable nine. Damian Massey running the balls there, looking good in doing so. Viktor Zelinski's lead reduced to 2-1. I can tell you over on table two, which you can watch on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. Nathwani leads 2-0 because... Abdullah Al Yusuf missed the nine ball to equalize. Yeah, we'll see. Massey break the balls here in game number four. Interesting. Usually have a lot of stats from the staff here at Matchroom and the dry break stats going to change a lot this week, Phil. I'll tell you that. Well, it's not appealing to Jason Shaw at the moment, these new break rules, because he might be totally in agreement with them. He's certainly not in agreement with the scoreline against Ingo Lamberti. Shaw trails 4-3 early days, yes, but slightly concerning. Absolutely it is. I mean, we all know how things can turn on you a little bit as far as, you know, there is a little luck in the game, of course. And, you know, I'd much rather a guy like Jason, he's trying to win every game. And now after seven games to trail by a game, definitely concerning. And sometimes some frustration can set in to the best of them. So hopefully it's just been a lot of good pool over there. Big shot here in the fourth game. If he can bury this two and get across for the three, everything else sets up to clear the table, it looks like. Not sure what he's really sizing up there. A little flat on the two, but kind of unloaded the arm in the last rack. He's got enough power here to move this cue ball back out to the center, I believe. Well, that tells me maybe the two didn't pass the seven which certainly fooled me. Look at the path of the, the two and the cue ball here. They came so close to colliding. Yeah, looking at that again, I would almost certainly say he had an entire pocket to shoot the two by the, by the seven. So now, now may be the time to play that cross bank like he did on the two ball and try and go up table for a little bit of position. And maybe a backdoor safety. But you can see he's breathing pretty heavy, trying to calm himself down a little bit, I bet. I'm definitely supposed to go for the cross corner bank here. Uh, he didn't want to play the 
the offensive shot. Just try to play a safety. Pretty handy. He's certainly got a lot of experience playing on the, the GB9 ball tour over the years. Played Euro Tour as well, of course. So he won't be like a fish out of water, that's for sure. Yeah, and I was on the train with a few players yesterday, Darren Appleton being one of them. And Darren's played some of the GB9 lately. And he just told me how, how difficult that tour, you know, it's gotten a lot more quality players in it than it did just a few years ago. Not sure. I think he was trying to put the three on the side around, use the nine, of course, as the snooker. But if he didn't, he opened up a four ball off the side rail to make things a little easier for Massey. looking at the shirt there his nickname those frightening films from yesteryear the omen films damien the omen yeah i guess the the picture on the front of the shirt of that's from the movie maybe or i, I don't don't know what that's about you may know better than me phil there's a picture of a person on the front of his shirt, with an image. Yeah, that's that's young Damien, the Antichrist. Oh, he okay. was in the film. <laughs> I think I missed that one. I definitely heard of the movie, but Al Yusuf with a pretty easy six ball that he missed there in rack number three. So Nathalani back at the table. Setting up to go three rails with the top left English here off the seven. his game but this last rack rack and a half these strokes look pretty darn solid timing looks good getting a lot of easy movement out of the cue ball it's always a good sign Yeah, had a, a snooker background, did Damien Massey, and that's quite clear with the technique that he employs. I think he's got cause for optimism here. 2-2, two, two, and if he thought it might be a, an easy contest, this, Victor Zelensky, he will have to think again. Over on table two right now, after missing the nine ball in the second rack and losing it, Abdullah Al Yusuf has another tricky nine ball to finally get on the board. These are the scores as it stands. So many matches going on. Alex Montpellier is through from France. Elvis has left the building. Spencer Oliver, good start for him. 
a 9-3 winner over Valentin Vogel. Thomas Kaplan, yet another wonderful player from Poland. He's won 9-4. And Richard Halliday from South Africa through also. Matches currently in progress. Well, Eden Sharav, the snooker professional from Israel. He's 3-3 with John Mora, I believe, after being 3-0 down. Another player you expect for another big title soon. That being John Mora, but he's got his hands full here early. And a dry break here in rack number five for Massey. I mean, you could go for this cross side bank. A lot of the guys want to stay pretty aggressive when you're a favorite in the match. So a lot of times these guys will play a safety in this part here and put them back behind the two. And again, that's sometimes the difference, you know, if he's playing a later in the tournament, what he considers a, a dead heat match. He may go after that two ball because position was there, or excuse me, for that one ball because position was there for the two. It's a pretty solid safety here and a tough kick shot. A purple fives in the way of the one rail kick. He'll try to come two rails. He'll try to come one rail between the five nine and then to the back side of the one off the bottom cushion. I may tie the two up here, Phil. I don't know. This is a pretty difficult kick shot. You hate to give up ball in hand, but you could easily roll the two up on the back of the seven and at least make Zelensky have to work for the run out. I like his chances here. His aiming looks good. Coming off the bottom rail. Yeah, super nice play there. That should get a little snap from Zelensky. A little mini applaud. Yes, because he had to come so close to the five ball to get that angle. Not only did he make contact with the one, he's precluded Zelensky from getting through to the, the potting angle, even seeing the one at all. Yeah, and recognizing the light speed was an easier way to hit the one. Plus, it, it really gave you a better chance to get safe behind this six and eight. He's a favorite here to make this, though. Oh, he's missed it. And both times he jumped the ball, it just seemed like he overhit it a little bit to me. Balls jump pretty easy with the equipment these days. News of another whitewash. Bada Alawadi. Terrific player from Kuwait. He's beaten Sebastian Rudek from here in Germany, 9-0. So I suppose you could say that Sebastian's had a, a Rudek awakening. Yeah, and the Kuwaiti players, they come to play. They're not, they're not here just to participate. Hey, that's a, a good good effort, I guess. But you know, that's the type of safety you need to you need to get the snooker. You're not going to end up liking it too often, leaving an opponent like Victor this type of scenario. Wonder if he goes for this and tries to come one rail into the seven with the cue ball, or if he banks the one away and lays him down behind the two seven. I think it's probably the safety. And I'll tell you what. You know, these guys, you know, they're professionals, right? So they're not going to vary a whole lot. But after seeing those two upsets of Thorsten and Rao, that's going to make some of these guys afterwards tighten down, you know, tighten it up a little bit whenever they're a big favorite in the match. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Jeremy, because I was going to ask you about this. Does it have the effect of, oh, you know, it's a day of upsets. This could be infectious. Or does it actually waken players up and prevent complacency? I, th I think the latter of the two more than anything, but with our new break format, I think that's something that, you know, they may question, hey, is the break format bringing some of these underdogs a little more into the match? Or is it maybe just some mistake-driven things uh, by the favorites that cost them the matches? So 
I think overall, just wakes him up a little bit. I'll tell you, you can see the snooker background on some of these kick shots, the speed and stuff. I understand they don't, they don't kick at the ball that often in snooker, but it just builds like a, a gut instinct for some of these kicks, it seems. Yeah, I don't like the jump as much here, and he's hit every kick really well, so... I think he's got to go left long rail to the top rail coming into the two with a light speed. Yeah, just right at this angle here is what I like. Of course, in snooker, you never kick out of a, out of a snooker. You escape. Right, snooker. right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but it's funny to me that the game is called snooker and it's still doesn't come up that that much where they do have to escape but like the game itself just kind of builds that that gut instinct for kicking out the ball and we've seen it so far from Massey here today another nice hit is going to swing the cue ball down not going to get the snooker but some awkward cueing Zelensky, one of the tallest players in the event, but never easy when you're dead over a ball. Type of shot from this distance. If you do miss it, you usually overcut it just a touch. Uh, you hit it sweet. Man, he put a lot of power into that for being over the ball and a ways away. Not getting any easier though, Phil. You can see how tough the shot on the three is. Position on the four maybe even tougher. Yeah, I think the whole package on the three is even more of a difficulty than. The one he's just overcome. I agree. And I don't think, I think it'll keep him from even shooting at the three, to be honest with you. I think he'll try to come off the left side, his left side of the three, and try and just use what I call, you got to use your talent. Just speed control to come one rail behind the nine. I think that's about all he has. Good chance he leaves him a look at the three, but, oh, uh, yeah, it's a little light. Containing, though, somewhat. Looks like he's going to shave the top of the three. This is a dangerous safety here. He could easily leave a shot if he's just going behind the bare ball seven. Well, he caught it thick, and that's no good either. Well, that could be the rack on a plate for Zelinski. Precisely at the moment where he wanted something like that. Yeah, no wonder he's shaking his head. That was a, a major error. Yeah, the four leads to the five. Just got to pinch this cue ball back a little bit to drop naturally off the five to the six. But, yeah, I just never liked the safety anyways just because if he dodges that side pocket, the cue ball is really not getting behind anything. So that was just a little touchy. Caught the six a little thick to the pocket. He's still going to get there, but 
there was some concern. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, pool players, snooker players, they tend to moan about big bounces. I think he benefited from a big bounce there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he knew it as soon as he struck the ball that, you know, you catch the ball a little thick to the hole, it'll cost you a foot or so cue ball usually. And the same on the opposite, catch a little thin to the pocket, you'll overrun the ball. Yeah, the cue ball did seem to speed up off that top rail and it's worked well for Viktor Zelinski because he's back in front now at 3-2. Over on table two, which you can watch on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. It's all the twos. Abdullah Al Yusuf was 2 0 down to Ashik Nathwani. Al Yusuf missing the nine ball in the second rack. But now it's all square at 2 2. Match you're going to be interested in. Jeremy over on table 14, Oscar Dominguez started out against Andre Vansner from here in Germany. Two racks each there, early days. Yeah, I was actually trying to find that match, but it hadn't started yet earlier, so super nice bank there. Is he going to get any love? Ooh, I don't think so. I think that cue ball stuck to the seven. May have his right side the three, but that's about it. Back to table one. I know it sounds crazy, but oh wow, an awful kiss on the cue ball. So we'll see Massey with some a ball in hand here. But I think Zelensky is still trying to figure out the break, to be honest with you. Well, of course, that's the second time he scratched on the break. Yeah, and again, most players, 90% probably playing a pretty firm cut break, and anytime the cue ball has speed on it. You're always in a little jeopardy, it seems. Nothing easy for Massey here, though. The five ball that looks pretty ugly connected to the six in the middle of the table. All right, doesn't even want to take it on. We may be looking at like a three foul scenario here. If you're new to nine ball. Three consecutive fouls by the same player's loss of game. Looking at a two rail skate maybe between the five and the nine. If may see a mass A shot here. Not really sure how else he can get at this two ball. Maybe see some type of mass eight kick shot. Always a fun one to watch. Mass A against Mass E. That's right. And the good thing is, is he needs to try and hit this, stay off two fouls for sure, but also that five six. Here's this, the mass A I was talking about. I would maybe go to the rail and Massé this ball. Yeah, like that, the way he's looking there. Now he could come. He's calling a referee to make sure they watch the shot. I like that. He could go up to the left of the three to the top rail, then go to the side rail with left spin and come back down. That's actually a better shot. Can't get a whole lot of speed on this. He's on two fouls. The player has to warn him. Now, from this position here, it'd be interesting to see if Massey tries to run out because he had the opportunity to try that from the scratch on the break. Didn't like the position the five was in. So I don't understand trying to run out from this position if he didn't like it to begin with.
or changed his tack. Now he's attacking. Big positional shot from two to three. Well, he's in a good spot here. And if the, I guess the five doesn't go on the side, that left side pocket. That was the problem initially. So he'd want to shoot the four and have a natural angle where he can come across and get that little gap between the nine and eight to play the, the five later on in the same pocket as this red three ball. Wants to probably play from a little underneath the four. That would be play the cue ball a little bit towards that left side rail. Could come back on top of the four. That's what he's done. He's played above it. And he's gotten close to it, which is always key whenever you're trying to play a tight positional shot for the next ball. He's got a very calm, composed, functional cue action. It's not one that you would imagine would break down under pressure. No, very simple. You know, just very natural back and forth swing we try to get into the nine with the cue ball well if the five goes in the side that's surprising to me because I don't know why he would have, wouldn't have tried to run out from the beginning earlier Thought the five only played in the upper left-hand corner, but. Well, it still kind of tells me maybe the five doesn't go on the side, but he's trying to size up the six, so guessing he does like the five. Maybe the type of shot field that he doesn't want to play with much speed trying to gain shape on the six makes the five missable. Yeah, so now where's the pocket for the six? The lower left, that's all I can imagine. Didn't think it went by the nine, really. And cutting back into a blind pocket is one thing, especially when the cue ball is so close to the object ball, in this case, the six. This could be missed. No doubt. You just don't get the perspective when your cue ball's close. Just always tell people, trust what you see. Looks like he's running the cue ball a couple rails around the eight. Displaying stickability is Damian Massey. Viktor Zelinski, for all of his wonderful success in 2022, has got a match on his hands. It is 3-3. Yeah, we talked about the mentality of, you know, the favorites in some of these matches after seeing some favorites get beat here early. But also on the other end of things, right? If you're a little the underdog, you can say to yourself, man, I've seen a few of these guys do it already. Why can't I? Some scores for you. Jeff Beckley now 4-3 up on Davey. Pier Giovanni. Daniel Massiol, good player from Poland, who did so well to get to the latter stages of the UK Open. He's 3-0 up on Aaron Cedric Gonzalez from the from the USA. Veteran Frenchman Vincent Fake, 5-2 up now on Ayub Baktawi from Morocco. Sullivan Clark, 
has come all the way from New Zealand. He's 7-2 up on Arik Reiter. And Emil Andre Gangloff from Norway. He's 8-2 up and on the hill against Mohsin Sadawi. Emil Andre Gangfort. And I believe we saw the corner ball there in the seventh rack. And sometimes when you play the heavier cut with a lot of spin, you can kind of push the corner ball in. And we saw it there with the six on the wing going in the corner pocket. And the one a lot of times will go long around for position. Now the cue ball's gotten lost on the bottom rail, so he's got to put a little effort into the swing here with a little top right. Looped it. No, and we'll see the jump cue again, but we've seen a couple misses, but I don't think this time. No cigar with shape, though. None whatsoever. Yeah, he may play a soft kick here. I'm not sure. But I still think he kind of overhit that one a little bit, to be honest with you. Like, he's almost fearing the jump happening, which is not something you see very often from today's players. Kick two rails behind this, trying to separate the balls. Could kick softly and try and lay on top of the two. Neither are great. I would probably go, go with the firmer kick, trying to get separation. That looked like a kick in a swing of some frustration there, Phil. <laughs> i tell you what, he's hitting the balls at 100 miles an hour, isn't he? Wowee. First match, early doors. Mm. Yeah, and I think I think the new break rule is going to be mentally fatiguing on some. They're going to have to get through that. I see on table two a, a break shot that wasn't bad at all, but you know when the cue ball's got movement, it's going to get kissed around. Gonna find a pocket sometimes when there's really no fault. Uh, it looks like he's missing this kick shot unless he's hitting down on it a little bit. This is a high ball. He's gonna whiff this. Yeah. Just it's not gonna bounce much from that angle. It's gonna slide on that rail feel. Well, as we expect from you, Jeremy Gray, cool. Now Zelinski wants to channel that undoubted frustration into action. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've, I've watched him play quite a bit, and occasionally, of course, like any of us, we'll show a little bit of something here and there, but that kick shot probably exhibited what I think is as much frustration as I've ever seen from a young man. back in line and we always talk about a field nothing will clear that head more than ball in hand it's just I don't know what it is it's like the uh, it's like the ultimate aspirin for any headache in the pool game pulls out to the fountain of youth revitalizes that is amazing I don't know what it is in snooker that 
that is the same. There's got to be something that kind of can wake a guy up. Viktor Zelinski led 2-0. He led 3-2, and now he's leading by four racks to three. Hard fought, though, this. As it is on table two, by the way. 3-3, Abdullah Al Yusuf and Ashik Nathawani. And Jason Shaw still waiting to apply the finishing touch over on table four. He was 8-5 up on... Ingo Lamberti, but Lamberti's just won the 14th rack. So 8-6 there, getting a little too tight for Shaw's best interests. Can't tell you, Petra Urban from the Czech Republic has come through. 9-3 just a, a few seconds ago against Daniel Dimitrov. He hails from Bulgaria. Yeah, a little tester here at 3-3 for Al Yusuf. Hadn't quite captured the speed of the table, I don't think, yet. Landed on the rail quite a bit on the nine. I think that's the speed. He took a hair off. Definitely a forceful break, which is part of the rules. Yes, and across the arena, Al Yusuf potted that nine ball with the cue ball tucked under the side rail, so he's 4-3 up. Doesn't look like anything offensive. Maybe the two banks cross corner, but I don't think it's something. Eh, maybe he could shoot at this. A few different types of safeties here, but I would certainly consider the cross corner bank. He could stun the cue ball forward into the three. You trying to hold him up behind the five here? That's a way over hit. And still not settled, that being Zelensky. Don't think he's offered a pocket for the two. Maybe a 2-6 combo. Not easy, though. Looks a little light with the cue ball. It's been a couple safeties for Massey, really, that have gotten away from him. Pretty difficult little combo. I mean, it's laying nice, but anytime you get some distance and you have to cut the ball a bit, you can definitely say it's a missable shot. I'm, sh I'm trying to wonder what he's going to do with the cue ball. I guess not much. Just try to hold it. Well, that's a cluster. Well, that would have been fortunate to get a rail because he certainly wasn't trying to two rail kick at that, trying to thin the two ball and then run the cue ball. Multiple rails around the table. and Massey now in a great spot. I think he sets it up near the six. I would anyways. And come between the three five with the cue ball. That looks a little easier, but drawing the ball's okay. And based on the evidence of what we've seen so far, you would... Strongly fancy him to to dish here and to regain parity at four acts each.
looking away from the table down at his fingernails. I've seen someone do that on many occasions. Ronnie O'Sullivan. He tends to do that to try and avert concentration from the opponent to himself. I'm sure you know that man's game top and bottom, but I think the snooker season has started back and we're going to hear a bunch from Ronnie O'Sullivan in 2022 and 23. Well, he's the greatest. He really is. First played him when he was 10 years old. He could hardly reach the table. And because he was such a youngster, I broke the balls up from the bat to give him a chance. Didn't really know how good he was. And he made a 50-plus break. His first ever visit to this particular table in the club I used to play, play at. By the time he was 11, I got no chance of beating him whatsoever. And by the time he was 12, he was world class. Certainly when he was 14, he was good enough to be a pro. Anyway, Damien Massey, good enough to draw back onto level terms here. It's 4-4, and we could see yet another upset. It's been a, a day of them thus far, and Massey might add his name to the list. Yeah, I know it's hard to compare from era to era and generation to generation and equipment changes, you know, information age, whatever you want to call it. But is Ronnie O'Sullivan the greatest ever in the game? I mean, that's a difficult... Oh, he's the greatest ever, yeah. He is. I mean, he is. Okay. what he's achieved in snooker is simply unbelievable. He's a seven-time world champion at the Crucible. Stephen Hendry has also won seven times at the Crucible. So that's them tied in that regard. But in terms of world ranking events, in terms of century breaks made, in terms of uh, total tournament wins, yeah, O'Sullivan is. Yeah, the numbers are there, but if you had to have, you know, errors play against each other, like just who was the greatest, and I guess it has to be Ronnie. But Yeah, I mean, it pains me to say so, because while I'm a massive fan of O'Sullivan, I'm also a massive fan of Stephen Hendry, but facts are facts. And the other thing with O'Sullivan, he's made 15 147 breaks in right. professional competition. All right, the corner ball shoved in again with the heavy cut with heavy spin. That's going to be one of the breaks that guys are going to you know, kind of flirt with. Watch the three, much heavier. Watch how much how slower I know the cue ball is moving compared to Zelensky's break, right? So he's playing a much heavier cut on the one and perfect position on the one to get to the two. Very clear right side of the table where he's trying to bring the cue ball. Always hit this pretty firm. Kind of punched it a little bit more than kind of drawn it, and that's gotten away from him. And didn't take as much time there as he's been before each shot, Phil. I don't think that would really cause that problem, but he's had a nice, subtle pace around the table. I think it's important when you're playing without a shot clock to establish your own rhythm and your own consistent rhythm. And if you break from that, either being a little too quick or a little too ponderous, then you can actually distract yourself in many respects. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, you'd like to think that that doesn't bother a shot like that, but there's no coincidence it seems to happen time and time again with players. So... It's a funny safety. He's got to hit this thinly to get around the eight if he's going to run the cue ball. This is where you'd like to be, a Ronnie O'Sullivan, where you can play lefty or righty. That would be huge on a shot like this. Well, the first time he played a whole match left-handed, I was commentating. It was the semi-final of the, the old Matchroom League uh, tournament. It was organized and promoted by, by Matchroom, of course. And it was against Peter Ebden, who won the World Championship in 2002. So he was a terrific competitor in his own right. 
O'Sullivan wasn't happy with the way he was playing, and so he just switched. And it was incredible to see. He won that semi-final, ended up winning the whole thing. Beat Hendry in the final, actually, the next day. And Ebden wasn't best pleased. He thought he was being disrespectful. But, of course, over the, the coming weeks and months, it became obvious that he was truly ambidextrous. Yeah, I've seen it on many occasions. Just highlights, of course. Got to got to make one of those great big snooker events one day. Plan on it. I think I want to go. The Crucible is where I want to go. Jeremy, you would not regret it. It is one of the the most wonderful experiences to walk out into that arena. One thing you will immediately think is, "Wow, this place is small. It's so small and intimate." But there's no place like it. And of course, Ali Pali as well for the Masters in January is another venue on the bucket list. I'll tell you, a little short on position there. And the problem with that is you can't really go forward that easily to play the seven up long. So he may let the draw stroke out here. I'm not sure yet. Top inside is a hard way to play on a slick table. But what I was going to get at is another upset kind of in the making here. Yeah, he's sizing it up. Top inside, the ball doesn't want to bite a lot. And usually when you're using inside English like that, you're trying to go ag against the grain. So... Cue ball wants to come off to the right of the five, but then he'll try to check it back to the left. It just doesn't want to seem to grab that much. The English, the side spin. I would let the draw stroke out myself. Well, that's about perfect. Yeah, got some real bite on that to draw back and clear the jaws of the middle pocket. Look at the late action. Yeah, the arc of the cue ball. That's something you see much more in pool than most other cue sports. And Zelensky, who's played a tight match. It's been a tight match the entire time, but I don't believe he's trailed yet. But we'll see if Massey can get out here. Yes, this would be the first Damien Massey lead, having trailed 2-0, 3-2, and 4-3. Yeah, I think I keep it simple here. Just kind of flick this in and take the nine in the left side pocket. You could try to work the cue ball, but I don't. I think the nine in the side is pretty natural and pretty simple. Looks like that's not what he's doing. Yeah, I thought that was a mistake right there, Phil. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, he shot that type of shot thousands of times. But sometimes, and a lot of times in pool, it's not really what all about what you want to do, but it's more about what's necessary. Well, that was by far the worst shot he's played in the entire match. And it was all about the side he imparted, no doubt. He made the eight, I think, as Jeremy was saying, unnecessarily difficult. And that could be a real big turning point because you don't want to give... Victor Zelinski, an invitation to go on a run. He's back in front again, the young Pole, the 21-year-old from Poznan. He leads by five racks to four. I'll tell you what, Jason Shaw still waiting for victory against Ingo Lamberti, 8-7 now. Eagle Eye could be grounded. I can tell you Roman Hebler, fine player from the Czech Republic, he had no problems whatsoever in overcoming Cyril Ledoux from France, 9-1. And John Mora, the Canadian who we talked about, Ronnie O'Sullivan being ambidextrous. He's also ambidextrous. He's switched completely. And he's started his campaign here with a 9-3 win over Eden Sharav from Israel. Yeah, I'm wondering what's going on in that Shaw match as well. Of course, winter break, so he's waiting for his turn, even though he does lead 8-7. to seven.
Jake Aspie from Matchroom has just tapped me on the shoulder and pointed me in the right direction for table four. I still have just in time to see Jason Shaw knocking the nine ball, so he has averted the possibility of a, a shock defeat. He's won 9-7. Now, what's been happening on table two? Well, we've seen quite a few mistakes over there from both players. As it stands, Abdullah Al Yusuf having the best of it right now. He leads 6 3. And Shaw, who's, you know, had some early exits, probably <laughs> pretty, pretty happy to get by that match and get that one done. He's a guy who. You know, of course, he's going to take it a little personal, but he knows how to to evaluate matches and what his performance was and some of those early exits. Some of them, it didn't matter. I believe it was the uh, Whirlpool Masters. Didn't really get to shoot much in that match and then had to go after after leaving early, uh, losing early, excuse me. Yeah, it was the same in the World Cup of Pool, wasn't it, when he partnered Elliot Sanderson? It wasn't as though he made a string of mistakes. Hardly at any quality table time at all. Yeah, and between the two Brits on that team, he was the only one that really got to shoot. Sanderson really didn't get many shots at all. Funny little shot here, this rail first. I don't know if he can make it or not. Yeah, he's just trying to play a containing shot, overhit it a bit. He really has got a, a good connection, Abdul Al Yusuf, but he is prone to the odd, very surprising mistake. We saw that in the Whirlpool Masters. But I think Ashak Nathwani so far has not been able to take advantage to the full degree of Al Yusuf's mistakes. So we'll keep you informed about Table 2, as we always do. Back to the action on Table 1, where... Zelinski is looking for breathing space. Yeah, and he's got to shore that break up a, a lot. Uh, you know, we'll see how it continues this match, but to make the run that he likes to make or wants to make in these events, or the expectation of runs, he's hitting the one a bit thin. He's getting a ton of movement on the cue ball. It's going to cost him later in the, in the tournament, if not this match, so... Trying to play a two-way here with the two ball off the nine in the corner, possibly the nine in the lower right, I think. I think, I think this shot is okay. I, I think he's got a shot to make both balls. Giving the two a shot to go off the nine right by the six, and then, the, of course, the nine ball. He hopes that vanishes in the lower right. Top English. Yeah, he made them both. That is sweet. It really is. He was looking for some form of inspiration. There you go. He'll be feeling a lot better now. Still, the match could change around. We know that. But Damien Massey is starting to regret a few things. The... The missed eight ball using the bridge. The in-off safety. That was a particularly bad error. And Zelinski is a shot maker who can really pile on the pressure and string racks together. Sharpish. You know, and Zelinski being 21 years old, he's kind of that generation that has grown up with the wing ball going in quite a bit on the break. So... Uh, I think that's something that the players of his generation and the younger ones are going to have to get a little mentally tougher. Maybe maybe that's some of the frustration we're seeing from him is knowing that, you know, there's no security in the break. It's a really good point, actually. When you're taken out of your comfort zone and you're under pressure as well, that's when frustration really can heighten. Yeah, and I think we've seen a variety of breaks 
that he's tried to use here early, and that tells you something about our new, new format. Variety of speeds, thickness of the hit on the one. He's close to the one here. I don't know if he can go offensive or not. He can certainly cut it in, but is he going to use the three to slow the cue ball maybe? He can play the one off the two. I would certainly and at least think about that shot, I think. But anytime you're close to the object ball, you can really manipulate the cue ball quite a bit, just like right there. Wow, what a shot. Yeah, I hate to say it, but that eight ball with the with the bridge to take his first lead at five four. That was a crippling miss by Massey and may may get Victor Zelensky going. a huge mistake he knew it as soon as he hit it it was too much well he's certainly not robotic he's very demonstrative out there very expressive Oh, and what a recovery that was. Well, both times earlier in the match, he was elevated on a two ball, and where most people are rolling the ball, he really unleashed the cue. And we're playing an all ball foul, so if anything moves, it's no question it's a foul. Big shot here. Oh, that was dead center. Never touched the rail. Exhibiting the talent we told you about at the start of the match. Looks like he's going to check the cue ball with a little spin. Nine goes in the side or the upper corner. Daddy draws the ball back. Very good. And the missed eight ball from Damien Massey with the rest at the end of the ninth rack is now getting into ever more sharper focus. You're always looking in these kind of matches when it's nip and tuck at the start. You're always looking for that turning point, that pivotal moment. And that had turning point written all over it. Yeah, and the funny thing is you know, he's going to chalk up the execution, but it, most players will recognize the mental mistake there as well. And I really think just simplifying getting on the nine. Uh, and when you're playing so well, that's, a lot of people think the opposite of what I do. When you're playing well, I like to keep it even more simple. You know, it's, it's like, uh, what's the point? You're never missing that nine in the side, and you're certainly not missing the eight if you're just kind of you know, kind of flipping it in the corner, right? Just kind of tapping it in. So suddenly, Zelinski, who had his early problems, is now two racks away from victory. A little better there than something that I was going to bring up. Seems like before he wasn't really taking dead aim on the break. You know, it's funny. You know, when you're breaking head on, you take dead aim, really want to flush it. Well, just because you're cutting them a little bit, don't let your process vary. Rollout situation most likely here. Three's a little covered up, so well, maybe he can cross the two.
Don't think he'll go offensive here. Hard to get position on the three. Could get to the left side rail and cut the three. That wouldn't be bad. Not a definite route off the two, though. This is maybe where I bank the two up and try and drop the cue ball below the eight. A lot of people overlook this shot where you can essentially overcut the two to the bottom rail. Let the two go back up. Maybe wander the cue ball behind the eight and nine. He's past the rollout. Now, I think that's what you're going to see from Victor. I think just a mild cut on the two to the bottom rail. Let the cue ball just kind of naturally slide downward. Yeah, somewhat like that. He was trying to play a percentage. He had a lot of balls to get behind. While the chances of an upset have temporarily at least receded here on table one, they're increasing on table two. Abdul Al Yusuf was 6 3 up on Ashik Nathwani. Now, though, it's only 6 5. Yeah, and I've seen Nathwani play before, and I don't think he's played his game yet. I think he can play much better now. Abdullah certainly hasn't played his game, he's given away a few. Well, he could be wedged up between the three seven here when this shot's over with. Could, should knock the two around and just roll the cue ball to the top rail, catching the side rail and just creep up on the back of the three and the seven. Didn't really add the side spin I thought he would to the cue ball. It's left a pretty easy jump. Now, sometimes players will want to stay away from the jump if there's a chance of them tearing up what is a problem. So if he jumped at this and hit the seven, could possibly open the three, four up a little bit. So he may go for the kick shot. I'm surprised he's not playing the two draw back and bang the three around and play the cue ball behind the four seven. He's going to go and play the initial safety off the two here. He doesn't get up underneath the three seven. He's going to leave a very doable kick shot. He's left a lot more than that here. Well, maybe not. <laughs> well, it's just a half a revolution of the cue ball. Got that nestled up on the seven. Well, if there's any consolation, Jeremy, I was with you there. I thought the cue ball was going to stop a little short of where it actually came to rest. He will have been concerned on its journey, and where it stopped, he will breathe a, a very hefty sigh of relief. And it looks to be because he can't really reach it. The three-rail kick is, is doable. All right, it looks like this is a smart kick shot, especially on the slidey table. Go to the top rail, the left side rail, and come down on the two. He'd love to go three rails at this ball, but he just can't reach it. He just can't get over it. I like this way he's looking at now. He's got to add just a, you know, eighth of a tip of left English maybe. Now he's got to go after this kick. He's already on one foul. Talked about it earlier. Three fouls is by the same player is a loss of game. The problem with this kick shot is hard to hit it, but if you do, you probably make it with no reward.
Yeah. It was it was always going to be problematic. Just avoided the two, but didn't avoid the pocket. Yeah. Again, he's not recognizing he can shoot the two, come out to the you know, low past the center of the table and knock the three around table, burying the cue ball behind the four and the seven. Doesn't really have to play the safety here on the two. Now he's looking at the safety on the three, which I think is a smarter shot. He's trying to get behind the three where he can knock the three down table and nestle up on the four seven. His opponent will be on two fouls. Doesn't really want to just bump it and leave the three close. He wants to get some separation on the three here. Well, unless he gets the three on the back of it, pretty good. A lot of things going on here, Phil. He's over the seven, so we're playing all ball fouls. Any touch of any object ball would lose the game here for Massey, being on two fouls. Yes, yeah, so make contact or see your opponent go onto the hill. Not very appetizing, is it? No. But uh, the way the kick's sitting, and he's got to go to the top rail, right side rail at the three. The way the kick is sitting, he does hit it. He's got a lot of opportunity to get safe. Now that's down the road. First things first, we've got to hit this ball. I can't see really any other way to kick at this. He's, he's taking a, something that's very difficult, I think, and making it more difficult looking at that top rail like he's he's doing he's got to go yeah this is the correct way even if you have to add a hair of left english uh, he's looking at a three row angle that i think is impossible to be honest with you yeah he's not going to catch this i don't think any kind of way Yeah, it's just, I know the math, the geometry of, of what he's looking at somewhat adds up, but it's just not really going to happen. He's either going to go between the three nine off the third rail or straight into the nine off the third rail. Yeah, I'd lay about 100 to 1 on this one, Bill. Yeah. Just never saw that really happening. So there it is. Three consecutive fouls from Damian Massey and his problems intensify. What a way for Viktor Zelinski to reach the hill. He does so at 8-4. You don't see the three consecutive foul rule come into operation very often, but Zelinski really used it to his benefit there. Yeah, very smart third foul he played. I thought the second one may have gotten away from him, but the cue ball worked out just nicely. Just perfectly, actually. And There's a lot of reasons why the three foul really isn't used. A lot of players won't go for it because they won't try to three foul their opponent. We'll see some scores here. Yes, Jeff Beckley. He's now 7-6 down against Davey Pierre Giovanni. It was a little worse than that, though, so Beckley is back in the game. Vincent Fake on the hill. Daniel Maciel going well against Aaron Gonzalez. So to Oscar Dominguez against Andre Vansner as Zelinski breaks off, needing just this one to advance. And a much better break speed, in my opinion. There, of course, not catching the one too thin, but... Table two, six, six with Nathwani and Al Yusuf. So definitely another rollout situation for Zelensky. 
Now this is a this is I was about to say, this is one time you may roll out to an easy jump just because we haven't seen much from Massey on the jump cue at all. He's actually passed on it a couple times when he could have used it, and this one he can't pass on. Down eight to four, and he's got to know that Victor's going to knock this two ball in most likely. And when you pass an obvious gem shot, the guys cotton on, don't they, pretty quickly, and they realize it might be a weakness to expose. Yeah, that's right. Efren was a guy that we'd capitalize on that a little bit, use that, knowing he doesn't use the jump cue very often. Now, Efren was so great that he'd go ahead and kick at it versus giving you the jump shot back, and he would usually succeed doing so. But, yeah, big one here for Massey, and he was kind of about to hold it kind of like a dart. You see how he's darting it? Most guys don't don't play this shot like that. They usually play the dart when the cue ball is a little closer to the cue to the nine ball or the object ball that's obstructing. Just to confirm what Jeremy was saying on table two, as we see Damien Massey knock in the two with that unconventional jump. On table two, it's six six. We were thinking it might be the beginning of the end on table one. Most certainly not after that. What a bolt from the blue. Yeah, you hit it sweet. Really pure. Nice slow roll there on the three holding position between the seven nine and should tighten this match up a bit here in a few shots. And Victor Zielinski will be thinking, what on earth occurred there? Well, you know, in Victor's defense, he probably doesn't roll out to there against, you know, 80% of the field, right? But Massey, like we had talked about, passed up on a couple of jumps. I'm sure he didn't know the history of Massey's jump, jump prowess, right? But took a little chance there up eight to four and, Massey's shown he's still in it. Yeah, he's jumped right back into this, literally and figuratively. 8-5 now. Zelinski still has work to do. Also on the hill in these first round matches Tim Yonkman from Holland he's 8-4 up against Hector Ivan Luna Iglesias I can tell you Mats Schnetner from Norway has just beaten Nimesh Patel from India 9-3 that happened just a, a few moments ago Vincent Fake on the hill Daniel Massey all there as well Over on table two, it's very competitive. I think anyone's match between Abdullah Al Yusuf and Ashik Nathwani, 6-6. Six, six. Nathwani, let's not forget, came very close to beating Francisco Sanchez Ruiz at the UK Open. Cue ball still spinning. It gets below the rack again. We're going to see a bunch of that this week. It looks like the nine has just barely got him cut off the one. So I don't think he'll pull the jump cue out again here. Maybe a rollout. Difficult rollout, though. The whole left side of the table is very clear. So he may challenge Victor here. Can't roll out easily to where the safety's, you know, a no-brainer for Victor. So he may challenge him here off this bottom cushion. And I think also with the break roll, we're going to see some difficult layouts, which I think is going to induce some mistakes at times or maybe some discomfort for players, which will also create mistakes and I think all in all, though, it's going to be a very good thing. 
it's indisputable that it's going to provide more variety. Oh, yeah. You're going to see guys fighting for racks more, kicking out of safeties, playing a lot of unique shots. Now, he did challenge him here, but he challenged him to where there's really no position to play for, for Victor here on this one ball to the two. Now, this is the type of shot he may bank the one back up table, try to swing the cue ball behind the three. Could hit the right side of the one and run the cue ball between the six and two back down behind the five, maybe. I think that's the shot, this shot right here. And he's hit this perfect. This may get behind the five. Oh, he got on top of the five, but... Got a little room between the rail and the seven. Let's get to that right side rail and then attack on the one. Good safe, though, that. Small tolerances. The cue ball had to skirt past other balls to get where it did. Yeah, you know, of course we're not at the table and we can't see everything like the players, but it looks to me if he goes at that right side rail behind the seven, he's got to cue downward on the cue ball a little bit. Well, he's looking the other route. Mm -hmm. And he's kicked beautifully in this match, but I think I have to go the, the little more guaranteed to the side right side rail here. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to roll this one, Phil. I'd want to have a little downward stroke, maybe trying to catch the one and bang it around table. I think he is elevated a little bit downward on it now. Yeah, he hit a top English, actually, and that just didn't ever agree with the shot, I think. And now Zelensky with ball in hand and probably ends this match here shortly. Yes, he'll want to wrap it up here and just get out of there because he has been tested, there's no doubt. good thing for Victor even though I think he's fairly settled in but rack lays very nice two to the threes close fours near fives and over the right bottom right corner pocket this little position from the five to the six with the seven over the the right side pocket so should get out Well, it's a match that we've seen pretty much everything in. Lots of scratches, dry breaks, break and run outs, a three consecutive foul rule being implemented. We haven't seen Zelinski at his best, but of course you don't want to be at your best at the start of a tournament. That's reserved for right at the end. And I think even though Damian Massey is pretty much lost this, he could have some reasonable results on the, the one loss side of the draw. He won't be going home immediately, I wouldn't expect. I totally agree. I thought I was very impressed. He was very settled. Made a lot of nice shots. I'd like to see him shoot that eight differently. I, we could have really seen a different outcome. Yes, Victor is the victor by nine racks to five. And so the 21-year-old from Poznan in Poland